Hey everyone, welcome to the Coding Zoo. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane and this is the JavaScript Building Block Series. Our goal at the Coding Zoo is to help others like yourself learn how to program. Uh, in this lesson, we are going to cover how uh, to create a queue in JavaScript. Um, we are going to cover this using particular array methods called push and shift. You could also do it with uh, unshift and pop we're going to use push and shift show you how that is not efficient in some cases and we're also going to show you how to create your own queue without having to use the array uh, we will also cover doing that in the an older syntax and the new es6 syntax of creating classes so if that interests you hey stick around we're going to cover uh, what a queue is and how to implement it let's jump right in So before we begin, let me let me explain what a queue is. In our last video, we talked about a stack and how a stack stores data in sequential order, the order you put it in place, uh, but it's uh, last in, first out, uh, or first in, last out. Well, a queue is first in, first out. It's kind of the opposite. A stack is first in, last out. A queue is first in, first out. So let's pretend my hand is a data structure. It's a queue. I want to, it, it keeps thing, it's going to keep things in order as how I put them. It's, it's going to be sequential. It's going to be first in, first out. Let's say I put this camera battery in the queue. I added an entry to the queue. And next, I want to um, add this red battery to the queue. Okay. So now I have two items on the queue. In a stack, if you were to do a pop, it would give you the last one entered, first one out. With a queue, if you remove an entry, it will remove the first one you put into the queue, or the oldest one in the queue. So this was the first one I put in. If I do a remove, it's gonna remove that. If I do another remove, it's gonna remove the next one. So first in, first out. So if I add another one to the queue, I now have three items in the queue. This is the first one I added. This is the second one. This is the third, right? So I added three entries to my queue. If I remove one, if I get one out of the queue, it's not gonna grab the last one I added. It's gonna grab the first one I added. So it would grab that one. And then if I did another remove, it would grab that one. It's going to grab them in the order that I put them into the queue in the first place. That's the difference in a queue and a stack. Very similar data structures. One is first in, first out. The other one is last in, first out. Pretty, pretty simple. Uh, so hopefully that helps you visualize what a queue data structure is. If not, let me know and I'll throw up a uh, diagram on our website for you. Leave me a comment below in the message. Let's jump into the code. So on my desktop, I have an index.html file. It links to a JavaScript file called main.js. Here's my main.js. I went ahead and wrote the code ahead of time for this lesson so we can go through it quicker. I still recommend, as usual, that you stop the video and write the code that I'm going over uh, so you can see exactly what the code does, get it stuck in your head. Let's jump in, we got a lot to cover. I have an array. So in this example, I'm going to use an array to implement my queue. Um, I could do it much cleaner and wrap this array in a uh, function or class. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to do it kind of in a quicker way. It would be cleaner to put a, a proper interface that represents a queue around the array versus just using the interface that's built into the array. But we're going to go a little quicker, so uh, I'm just going to use the array without wrapping. So I have my daily task list. Uh, think of it as a queue. Um, it's going to print out the items that are in the task list. Uh, I think it may have already ran. Let's, yeah, press refresh. There's nothing in the queue. All right, so I'm going to uncomment this code. Okay, here I went ahead and I pushed an item to the queue, and I pushed another item to the queue. So I'm adding items to the queue. If I were to write a clean interface around this, the method would be called add or in queue. Um, I'm pushing another item to the queue. I'm pushing task onto the queue. So the first one I pushed is coffee. So first in, first out. Um, but first, let's see how this works. Let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to comment this out real quick first. Show you what it's like before I remove anything. 
from the queue. All right, save. All right, so remaining task in the queue. So here are the items that I put into the queue. Think of each one of these as a different slot in the queue, right? So I wrote out my second entry in the queue, morning, prayer, and meditation. So my first entry I put in the queue is must have coffee. And then I put morning, prayer, and meditation. So that's the second entry in my queue. Now I'm gonna show you that the array, using the array for this will actually, when you remove this one, it's gonna take this from the first slot, right? From the, from the index zero slot of the array and it's going to move this, the one in the second slot to the first slot and then it's going to move the one from the third slot to the next slot and then so forth and so forth so when you remove something from this queue this way from this array it's going to take all the following items and move them over one slot so that's that's not efficient the queue should be o1 as far as uh, speed it should uh, be instant. Uh, in this case, it would be O in because you have to touch everything in the array and move them over. So that's why using these built in features of uh, in an array for queue isn't that efficient. It's probably okay for most cases. You got a small queue and your JavaScript code is running like on a browser. There's not a lot uh, of data in the structure. That's fine. It depends on your, your use case. If you're going to use use it a lot and you're going to use it uh, with a lot of data in the queue, um, then probably not the most efficient way to do this. Hey, buddy. Hi. All right. So let's look at what it looks like when I take one off. So keep in mind, my second item in the queue is morning prayer and meditation. So um, let's uncomment this code. And I'm going to remove, I'm going to remove an item. So I put items on the array using push, kind of like your stack. Uh, if I were to wrap the array with a queue interface, it would be add or in queue again. For using an array uh, as a queue, you can use push to add an item to the queue and shift to take the item off. Or you can use uh, unshift to add an item to the queue and pop to take it off. They're kind of opposites, right? You could do either way. We're using push and shift. Push puts an item on the queue, shift takes the first item you put on and takes it off and so forth and so forth. Um, all right, so let's run this. It's gonna retrieve a task from the queue and it's gonna show you what's left in the queue and it's gonna show you the second entry. And like I said before, this isn't efficient. It's gonna move the entries around. So you should see the second entry change uh, to something different than what it was before. Let's run it. All right, so I retrieved must have coffee. My task left or morning prayer, check email and get ready for work. My second entry is check email. My second entry is no, long, no longer morning prayer and meditation. So at the index one in the array, I have a different value than I had before. This means it's moving those values around to different indexes. So that means it has to touch every item in the array. Uh, that's not efficient. All right, so. Again, it's okay to use it for small sets of data. No big deal. Keep it simple. Keep it stupid simple or keep it simple stupid. I'll get it mixed up. Kiss. It's a good saying. Keep it simple stupid. No, keep it stupid simple. That's probably the better way. Not keep it simple stupid. All right. Anyway, let's move on to the next item. Uh, I'm going to show you how to implement this in a more efficient way. I'm gonna uncomment this code and pretty much print out the same um, data that I printed out before. So I have this constructor function. So I have a function called Q. Now it sets up these variables, old index, new index, and a data storage. The data storage is basically an empty object. I'm creating an empty object, an object literal. So we're gonna cover object literals and how to create objects in ES6 later. Uh, this lesson is going to use a little bit of that. Hopefully it won't throw you off too much. We'll cover in depth how to create those things in upcoming episodes. Um, so I have a constructor function. It's basically creating an object called Q. This is a constructor function. When, when you, this is a way of creating an object in JavaScript. Uh, keep in mind, objects have 
prototype, inheritance, and JavaScript. And we'll go over in details what that means later in the next coming upcoming lessons. But this function, you would call it to create a new queue. Um, I use the queue, I use the, the base of um, the base property of prototype um, to add on more functions. So I do queue.prototype add. So I'm adding a function called add and I'm setting the function to this right here. This function takes in a data. It stores that data using the index, which this is the first time would be one. So I'm actually storing that data. It's being passed, at, passed in as a property on this object, internal object, data storage. The property is called one, okay? Uh, and then I'm increasing that index. So the next time I store something, uh, it will be a property two. So I'm creating a property on this data storage called one. Kind of like an array, but it's, 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 a, it's a property. All right, so that's my add function. So there's, again, it kind of looks like an array here, but I'm really just dynamically adding a property. And that property is called one. All right, so I have a remove function again. I'm using that um, Q prototype and I'm adding a function remove. So remove equals function. There's no parameter being passed in. It looks at the oldest index and the first time the oldest index would be one. And it uses that one to dynamically access the property one on data storage, which if I just add one, the only property I have on there is one is only added one so this is using the old index which equals one uh, to access that property that we called one in the add and retrieve that data right there okay once i have that data from that property since this is a remove function i'm going to go ahead and use delete this dot data storage which is accessing that internal class again that we're using for data storage i'm going to remove the property oldest index, which right now would be one. And then I want to increase the oldest index to two. So if I add, and then I'm going to return the data. So if I add another item to the data storage, uh, that data would be added uh, as two, because the last time I added something, it was one, and I increased it here to make it two. So basically I have a, a number. Every time I add something, I put a property on this internal storage that's called the same as that number variable. So if that number variable equals one, the new property I add for the, for the data I'm adding to the queue, I, I call it one. And then I change that index to equal two. And the next time I add something, I'm gonna add a property called two to the internal object my storage um, my data the data storage and if I add another one it's going to be three I'm just going to keep adding properties that have numbers their number prop their properties their properties named with a number one two three four I'm just going to keep adding properties to that internal storage object object data storage one two three four as I add more the number will keep going higher and higher of course, there is a limitation. It's way out there in JavaScript, so you know, not too much to worry about. But um, now, when I I have a variable that keeps track of what the property sh number should be after you add one, so my remove has an it uh, uses the the oldest index. The oldest index helps me keep track of which entry uh, was well helps me keep track of which entry is the oldest, right? So if I add using the newest index, one, two, three, four, right? I've done a bunch of adds, one, two, three, four, and, and the next add would be a five property on the data storage. Um, the oldest index is still set to one. And what's the oldest one out of those five I added? Well, the oldest one would be one because I added it first. It's, it's the oldest one in the queue, right? So that's why you have two different indexes. Um, so if I call remove, it's going to use that index of one in the oldest index and remove it. If I call remove again, well, that index has been changed to two. It, that's two is now the oldest because one's already been removed and it's going to remove, remove it. 
So I'm using these two indexes to keep track of what I've added to the array and which one's oldest. What should be the new index for the new item I add to the array and what's the oldest index. That's what these two variables keep track of. Here's my remove. It gets the old index. First time you call it, of course, it would be one. You access that data storage property of one. You get the data. You delete. This is a way to delete. The, again, this is a way to delete the property from the data storage. And then I increase the oldest index to make it two. And I return the data. Let's go ahead and run it. So I'm going to show you the same code running here as I did in the previous example. All right. So here, constructing the queue, I'm adding Shane, which would be one. Adding Christina, Nick, Gabrielle. So I added four entries. And now I'm going to call, and if you go back and look, it's going to call remove. Remove, 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 remove. Right? So the first one I added to the queue was Shane. So the first one it removes should be Shane. There it is. Next one's Christina. Next one's Nick, Gabrielle. And look at there. I called remove too many times. So what happens when you run out of items in a queue? Well, in, in this implementation, it just, it just returns undefined. It couldn't find that property. And that's a good hint that, hey, your queue is empty. But if you were implementing a proper queue, you'd have like a method to say, you know, is it empty or not, or the size, all that good stuff. Okay, so that, it's that simple. So I've uh, created a queue. Now, the difference in this and the first example I showed you is, well, this doesn't use the shift method, which moves data around in the array. This is O1 as far as speed, not ON. It's a little bit more efficient. The downside of this is, well, integers, numbers are only so big in JavaScript. Um, so eventually it's, you know, you'll hit the boundary, which is way up there. It, I wouldn't worry about it. it. Most implementations you're using this for, you wouldn't hit it, but okay. Uh, so pretty neat. Let's move on to another way of doing this. Let, how would I do this in ES6? Well, I would just create, instead of using a constructor function, I just create a class I'm create a class called Q. Let's look at that. Okay, so I have a class, so class, the name of the class. Uh, then I have my squiggly bracket and squiggly brackets down here. So that's how you create a class in ES6. And we're gonna go over that in depth in upcoming lessons very soon. Uh, I'm gonna add a constructor. So the constructor is a function that's ran. When you create an object out of this class, a constructor is ran automatically. And it's usually used to put to add data to your object that's being created from the class. So this constructor doesn't have any parameters. Uh, it is setting the old index to one, setting the new index to one, and it's creating my data storage uh, literal object, internal object inside of this queue for storing the data, just like we did uh, with the constructor function. You see, I have add. Uh, and I'm, I have basically a function signature, de a declaration, but I don't have the word function there. So this, this is the new syntax. I'm just adding a property to this class. Um, I, don't have to put the, I don't have to put the keyword function. I just put the name of the, the function, name of the, the uh, operation, add. Here's my parameter, squiggly bracket, and then end squiggly bracket. So kind of like declaring a function, a little bit different syntax. All right. And this is actually closer to Java uh, than older JavaScript. Um, so this is the new ES6 way of creating a class uh, in JavaScript. All right. So I'm, I'm doing the same code as I was in the, uh, in the previous example. I am um, using the new index to add data to my internal data storage, literal object, object literal rather. Uh, and then I'm increasing that index. That's what my add does. The remove, same thing. I'm getting that old index. And I'm getting the data from that property that equals the old index, the property name. Um, I'm deleting that property from the object. And then I'm upping the old index and I'm returning the data. Same code as the previous example. We're just wrapping it in an ES6 class. Okay. Now here's my code for actually using that class. So first thing I do is I do constant 
my variable name and I go new and the name of my class. And when I do that, it's going to call that constructor and set up the internal data structures to my object. And my object is now extensiated. Right? Here I'm going to add, same as the previous example, add, add, and add. And then we're going to make sure that the remove happens in the same order. And it should be exactly like the previous example. Let's see. There we go. Okay, I'm constructing it with the ES6 class. I'm adding Shane, Christina, Nick, Gabrielle. The first item you remove should be the first item you added onto the queue. That's the whole point of a queue. I'm removing Shane. There you go. I'm removing the next. So it's in order like a queue should be. So pretty simple, pretty simple stuff. So that's how you would implement this with an ES6 class. I, prefer, I actually like the class way better. It's pretty neat. Uh, a lot cleaner. Of course, my original language uh, learning as a programmer was Java. Uh, so it's very much like Java. I think both the constructor, the constructor function and the class are, are pretty nice and much better than the first example I showed you. So that's it for today. If you have any questions about Q and the difference in it and a stack, let me know. Leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Uh, I hope this makes sense. If not, let me know what you don't understand. I will get back to you. I'm here to help you. Thanks for joining us. If you like the video, click like. If you want to see the upcoming videos where we cover how, uh, how to create objects, especially with ES6, subscribe and click that bell and it'll let you know when the next videos come out. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.